What's going on, y'all? And welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today is our Naval Captain Landy Honest Review. We tested her all day, first picking her in RTA, and she's been an absolute blast. A lot of people, of course, myself included, were very hyped for her, expecting her to be very strong, and she definitely delivered. There are a few exceptions, though, that were different than what I imagined, uh, mainly being her weaknesses and the builds that I thought a lot of people would run. Um, but we're going to go over all that, build, stats, sets, artifact suggestion, and stay tuned till the very end if you guys are on the fence, especially if you're a little bit newer, uh, because she may not be, even though she's very strong, she may not be a must pick for everybody, especially if you have to spend, you know, up to a Mystic's worth of pity. So I'm going to help guide you. I have a few tips on to help determine if she's worth it for your account personally. Uh, other than that, guys, let me know how your summons went. I think I spent about 3,000 Mystic's or 60 pulls, so not complaining at all. Even if I didn't get any artifacts or heroes, didn't have to pity. Only six or uh, 3,000 Mystics, I'm very happy. A lot of my guild and stream chat actually got her within one 10x, two 10x's. Very, very lucky overall. If your guys' luck hasn't been as good, I'm sorry, boys. If you haven't summoned yet, but you decide to after this video, best of luck to you. Let me know how they go. And without further ado, let's get into the video guide. All right, guys, jumping straight into the stat line that I ended up on. Please pay attention. I have a lot to talk about here. This build, of course, is not going to be for a lot of you guys. If you notice, I have 79 going to be over 80 after mod gems of effect resist which 99 percent of y'all watching do not need i'll explain this uh, if you've been watching a lot of my videos you know why i run effect resist here and there on a lot of my dps units um but i'll explain for those of you that aren't in just a second um however if you see any gameplay footage today from landy understand that during my testing today i was on a speed main stat boot so instead of essentially all you can all you need to know is I had like minus 500 attack compared to this and then uh, I was like plus 45 speed so 160 speed and then 3200 attack everything else was pretty much the same overall I got a little bit of a bigger boost swap swapping to these boots and I think they're going to be better overall but let's go ahead and talk about the stat line and why I decided on this uh, stat spread and there's a few reasons right number one guys you see we have a lot of bulk a lot of attack we're going for pretty much zero speed. I do have a little bit of speed subs, which I don't think is a bad thing or a good thing. Um, and I'm going to talk about speed here in just a moment. We have pretty much, you know, if I could get 100 crit, I'd like it. But I don't mind. I'm one of those players that doesn't mind having under 100 crit, especially for a unit like Landy, who isn't either going to take like, you know, she doesn't have a insanely hard hitting skill one where you have to make sure you crit. She has a, a weight of attacks, a huge volume of attacks. And so, you know, being at 97 crit shouldn't be the biggest deal. In fact, I think it's fine because a lot of players overcap their crit and then you're losing some stats elsewhere. Crit damage is where you guys might think this is a little bit low. And I agree. Um, we are on a crit chance main uh, neck. That way we can get, get more stats overall. It is the most efficient if you guys have it. But the reason I opted for, you know, usually you want to have a good balance between attack and crit damage. Same thing with defense and health, guys, right? It's about efficiency. Uh, the reason we have lower crit damage in exchange for attack is one, because of the crit chance neck, and two, because this salvo fire, guys scales the healing scales off the attack and of course she has a lot of attack scaling too but that's why i think it's going to be okay that my crit damage is pretty low our damage is going to be good especially once we ramp up we have very high attack compared to i think a lot of the landy builds i've seen and i'll give some example landy builds for my guildmates for those of you that aren't going to be rocking effect resist but just imagine boys those of you that can match my stats you get to put those 79 or 80 uh pieces of stats into other you know, wherever you want. So instead of that 80 effect resist, 79 effect resist, you get to put that into attack, defense, health, speed, crit chance, crit damage, wherever you guys want it, and you guys will be better off because this is for a specific uh, build or a team composition, I should say. But other than that, guys, that's the main reason I want high attack, and I really like this build. Let's talk about speed, as this is going to be pretty important. I don't know where we're lying on this yet. I was testing 160 speed, and I felt it was okay. I've heard some people trying like very low speed. This is pretty much zero speed build. I have only 16 speed substats on random gear. And um, I don't mind that at all. Would I prefer to be at 99 base or just having zero speed? Maybe. But I think having a little bit is okay because eventually you do want to hit that big skill three and having extra, you know, speed for a little bit more uh, combat readiness is fine. But the big thing is on counter set plus Elbrus, you're going to be getting so many combat readiness pushes. She's going to be attacking so often. It's going to blow your mind, guys. It's literally watch the animation. She's just going to be popping off. 
so often and then she's also going to be hitting those salvo fires on top of that don't forget this also has healing which scales off attack once again now i think it's important i show you guys um the effect resist build and let's go ahead and take a look at my maid chloe real fast so maid chloe once again i'll go through this fast because i think some of y'all already know about this but we have a team imprint of about 14.4 percent effect resist we have plus um 20 percent effect resist which doesn't show right but this will be uh 20 so we're at 34.4 and then we add another 20 so we're about 55 plus effect resist for my entire team with your modular staff included one other nice thing is guys if for the very few y'all that play made as your primary soul weaver why you guys might want to try the effect resist build is because this extra healing also works in tandem with the landy salvo lifesteal so we're getting even more lifesteal she's going to be so hard to kill 70 percent anti-crit resist right bonus healing on the skill one because of our super high attack and with made we're going to be immune to a lot of the annoying debuffs that aren't coming from the dedicated debuffer unit so a lot of those annoying um attack breaks provokes uh blinds things like that on units that typically don't have a lot of effect resist we are going to shrug off and even some units like um meteor Kuwaric, a lot of times we will be able to shrug off their big strip and attack break rol sometimes will will uh, shrug off her skill one uh strips because of course we're probably not gonna we're not gonna get um skill three because she is immune to stuns so that's my build i'll show some example builds here uh in editing uh but other than that guys i think this is what i like just remember y'all get to put your effect resist into all the other stats if you're not running the f res stacking build with may chloe as your primary soul weaver so overall i would say for sets I would 100% try counter set, okay? And this is going to tie into at the end of the video where I think some of y'all may want to skip on Landy just in case. Now, I have heard destruction might be okay, but boys, I really think counter set is the best in slot. Um, she's going to get hit here and there from either AoE. Some people might try to focus her down, especially those of you that are lower health. So be careful with your bulk, but I really do think counter set is the best. Destruction, I think, might work okay, but everybody I know is playing on counter, and I do think it's the best in slot for sure. We really want to be hitting those precision targeting, um, and especially into the salvo fire, so we want to increase that chance with every single bit of, uh, you know, any way we can, essentially. Um, other than that, though, guys, so counter or destruction, I think, is where you should go. I don't really think speed build would be very good unless you're trying, like, to use her in a cleave comp, one to take away from your opponent. That might work too, but if you guys are already on that kind of out-of-the-box thinking, you don't need my help on a video guide. For those of you that are watching, though, go counter destruction. And for the two-piece set, I think this is very flexible. So, of course, I'm going effect resist. Most of y'all don't need this. I think it's a flexible spot. You can choose either penetrate. Oh, uh, sorry, not penetration set. You can choose either immunity, crit set, just for bonus crit. Let's say, for example, you're not rocking a crit chance neck. You might need that extra crit chance. Or I think, actually, if you guys have a very nice unity set, it could be end up being the best in slot because any additional ways like i said guys to proc those skill ones into the salvo fires unity sounds very interesting as well i just need that extra effect resist so that i hit a good threshold for resisting debuffs but anyone that's able to check your counter sets check your unity sets i think that's the way to go in the future and then speed will be up to you guys that's the main thing make sure you have bulk to survive her weaknesses which we're going to jump into here in just a second and then make sure speed you can either try this main stat speed boots some people like 140 160 170 speed some people like the zero speed variants i'm going to try this and i think i'm going to be a, a zero speed player myself all right guys so moving on from here let's go quickly talk about skill enhancements it's a plus 15 no questions asked boys plus 15 this unit you won't regret it you want to get plus 15 on everything she's a unit that wants every stat every mola don't skimp all right as for artifacts, I think there's no other artifact than Elbrus. Same thing. Some of y'all might have some weird out-of-the-box builds, but that's not what this guide is for. This is for a generalist purp general purpose landy build, and Elbrus you definitely want as well. Counter plus Elbrus, and then for those of you rocking Unity on top of that, we want to maximize the amount of skill ones we're getting. To, it just synergizes with their kit. We're getting lifesteal back. We're proccing those salvo fires. We're hitting range units or stealth units. It is just a thing of beauty. So make sure you get the Elbrus. You get the counter set. Uh, make sure you're proccing as much as possible. All right, now let's quickly talk about her weaknesses. We kind of talked about what makes her strong. 70% anti-crit immunity to stun sleep. The massive amount of just AoE she's going to be spewing out. And the skill 3 hits like a truck once you scale it up as well. 100% stun chance and, tar and defense pen is ridiculous, right? So those are the strengths. The weaknesses are going to include units like Rowana, Lone Crescent Bologna, I think Inferno Kawazu and potentially Rimuru can hold uh, can give her issues as well. So essentially, Rowana is an issue because right she's gonna proc she's proc so often that the healing and combat readiness push sometimes will outweigh your damage output. Right, that's why a lot of people build injury on certain units because Rowana for anyone that extra attacks, counter attacks, dual attacks is such a pain in the butt. 
Lone Crescent Bologna is the reason you guys are going to need to make sure you build some bulk because if your health is, and defense are too low, Lone Crescent Bologna is going to bypass that 70% crit and just one-shot you, no problem. Honestly, good Lone Crescent Bologna's might one-shot you regardless of your bulk, so just be wary of that. You might have to banner, you might have to play around it here and there. Um, units like Inferno Kawazu, obviously an issue because we have a lot of AoE. He gets to, you know, if you don't know how he works... Essentially, he's designed to kill units like Landy. You have units like Rimuru, which actually aren't that big of a deal, guys, because the 70% anti-crit, we will take like an 8 to 10k fixed damage output from Rimu. But overall, uh, if he misses the crit, which he most likely will, we can usually survive that with our massive amount of bulk that we built on our Landys. Um, there are going to be a lot more counters that come up. I expect if people that push 20k HP on Landys, you're going to start to fear units like Hua Young. I think... As the game progresses, people will have to figure out this unit because she is so good. People will find answers to fight against her. All right, but those are the main few I've encountered so far. Anyone that thinks Lionheart is a counter to Landy, it is not at all. Lionheart's buffs, actually, the attack, they gave her some attack scaling. It wasn't that much damage increased. The combat radius, of course, is, a, is nice, but Landy can shrug off a lot of Lionheart's early damage, and she outscales her near the end. It's not a hard counter. Landy, or Lionheart, I think, is okay in a Landy, but... If you think that's a uh, instant defeat for Landy, uh, you're mistaken because the anti-crit just cuts off a lot of the Lionheart's damage. And Landy, I think, can compete with her as the game progresses. Um, I think that covers most of the stats, builds, weaknesses, and strengths. Let's quickly wrap up now, guys, with what I wanted to talk with y'all at the end. So, is Landy worse, or worth your hard-earned up to 10,000 Mystics? I think 100%. Only, the only reason you wouldn't is because you can't gear her appropriately. And so if you're brand new guys, you might benefit from a different style of unit that is either easier to play or, you know, just one of those insanely strong units like Conqueror Lilius, like Spectre Tenebria. If you guys want to save for like, you know, a different banner here and there, you might have more use out of those kind of units because Landy, I think, does need some insane stats. So here's what I'm going to tell y'all. If you guys happen to have a unit like Charlotte, try to find a unit that has the same stat line and star sign. So Charlotte is one that we can use. I put the Elbrus on. Make sure you take off her exclusive equipment and change her team imprint. That way, you guys can go ahead and start theory crafting. Obviously, you can use uh, applications like Fribbles. But for those of you that don't know any of that, take a unit like Charlotte and start, you know, just playing around with the stat lines. Try counter set because I think this is by far her best in slot. And then just throw on some gear, right? Because her stat line is exactly the same. And I'll show you that right now, guys. So... If we just do like max enhance and I throw on all the counter resist gear that I had for my own build, it's going to be exactly the same um, in the long run, right? So just throw some stats on. And if your landy's looking like on counter set, it's not going to be that good. Then you may you might want to hold off. She'll come back again, either in a custom mystic or on the coins or in next year's run. It's just I think it, without a ton of gear, she's not going to feel good at all. She's going to get blown up or just not do enough damage. People are going to find more counters to her as the game progresses. Uh, but that's the only scenario, I think, guys, that you do not want to pull for Landy is because of the aforementioned just hard stat requirements. And gear is such a hard thing to farm in this game. I don't blame anyone that, you know, decides not to pull because it's just too much work. By the way, uh, we're missing the attack imprint, so that's why this looks a little bit different. But overall, I think, guys, everybody else that thinks they can get a decent counter set, don't forget there's a reforged gear. You may not want to dedicate that to counter gear, but if you really think you're going to be a Landy main, go ahead and use that reforged uh epic event on some landy stat lines get the counter gear rocking pick your two-piece set and i think you guys will have so much fun with this unit good in almost every scenario um just watch out for those kind of hard counters that i mentioned uh rowana lone crescent bologna being the main two i've found so far but works in anti uh works into cleave works in aggro works into other tanky players other bruiser players she's a godsend unit guys so fun i'm actually waiting tomorrow to go on stream and play her even more with this new build that i'm testing out so thank you so much for watching good luck on your summons if you haven't already and i'll catch you all in the next one Peace out, guys.